blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who are now hungry. Blessed are you who are now weeping. Blessed are you when people hate you. Who will believe that? Who will ever doubt that the poor, the hungry, and those who weep will be blessed? Who want to be poor or hungry or weep or be hated? We regularly see on our TV screen many terrible signs of poverty, hunger, sadness, and hatred and all the bad consequences and suffering that they cause. In fact, what people want is to be rich, is to be filled now, is to laugh now, to enjoy life, and to be well spoken of. So if Jesus say those words in the Gospel of today, Obviously, he wants to teach us that real and genuine blessing and happiness is something other than the common understanding of happiness and blessing. The word today says happiness includes a lot of money, foreign holiday, a big house and many great other material things. So, the question that remains and that has to be answered now is, what is Jesus' understanding of happiness and blessing? In short, we could say it this, like this. There is no true happiness outside the will of God. Saint Augustine said, Lord, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless, and we continue to be restless until they rest in you. God has made our human heart. And so we will be happy only when filled by God. Our being from the first moment is directed towards God and oriented towards God. And if we deny this, if we try to find God elsewhere, we will never be happy and have the blessedness God is talking of in the gospel of today. This is why it would be impossible to meet a person possessed by greed who is also deeply happy in his heart. It will be impossible to meet a person taken over by strong desire of possession and luxury who will be happy. Paul wrote in the second reading of today, if our hope has been for the life only, we are the most unfortunate, unfortunate of all people. And our first reading, predict and state a curse on the man who put his trust in who put his trust in men and who rely on the thing of flesh. The only thing that will bring happiness is to love and to be loved. But here by love, we should understand the pure form of love we see in Jesus, which sacrifice ourselves for the benefit of others. But now, let us come back to the word of Jesus in the gospel. 
Jesus did not say that poverty or hunger or sadness or hatred is a blessing. Jesus does not mean that, that in itself it is good to be poor, to be hungry, weeping, or hatred. Poverty, hunger, sadness, and hatred are social problems that we should always strive to conquer. So, what did Jesus say exactly? Jesus said, that the people are blessed when they are poor, when they are hungry, weeping, and hatred. Why? Because poverty, hunger, sadness, and hatred are not blessing, but they become. They, they, because but the couple state of need and dependence that make us rely on God. When we rely on God, then we are who we are meant to be. Human being in a relationship with God, our creator. So, poverty, hunger, weeping, and hatred or whatever is our particular trust can be an instrument to draw us closer to God. So it is clear. Whatever trust we have in our life, it is there for a purpose to keep us close to God. So in that sense, our trust is also our blessing. And what Jesus said in the today's gospel is true. The problem and the danger stressed by Jesus here is that when we are rich, when we are filled, when we laugh and are well spoken of, we may be tempted to forget God. We may be tempted to treat the gift of God as our worldly God and only rely on them and then blindly worship them. So we have always to be careful because what looks like a blessing in the eyes of the world can, from the spiritual point of view, turn out to be a curse as Jesus stated in the gospel. But on the contrary, what the Lord said to Jeremiah in our first reading will always be true of everyone putting God first in his life. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the water that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fear not the heat when it comes, and its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress and still bear fruit. Amen.